God bless everyone. Welcome to Kumbler Church. Uh, as we prepare for worship, we invite you to uh, just take a deep breath and uh, connect with the Spirit of God that is present with us this morning. Yeah. We're glad you're present. We know He's present. And uh, Sharon's going to play the prelude. We'll light the candles and prepare to worship. Randy for stepping up. Uh, our opening song today, I would invite you to stand, is To God Be the Glory. And this is this is a hymn that uh, is one of those that has, why well, let me just back up and say, you know, hymns have sometimes those catchy little phrases that mean so much, and they'll get tucked away in the second verse of the song. This is one of them. Uh, just listen to this little rhyme. I just love this. The vilest offender who truly believes that moment from Jesus a pardon receives. Now, isn't that God's grace in a, in a nutshell? So I invite you to stand. Note that one in the second verse. To God be the glory.
to let you guys take a breath after. Isn't it? Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. Please join me in our call to worship. Happy are those who follow the ways of the Lord. God's ways are just and merciful. Those who follow God's ways are continually nourished in faith. All Come, let us open our hearts to God's compassionate love. Let us celebrate God's mercy and justice. Amen. Amen. Please join me in our opening prayer. Lord, be with us this day, helping us to put our priorities in order so that we may faithfully serve you by serving your people. Heal our spirits. Enable us to follow your ways all the days of our lives. Amen. Our next song is uh, just a beautiful chorus of prayer called Sanctuary. And we're going to sing it through twice. And I want to tell you that one of the things I've noticed about when we don't have hymnals, of course, because of COVID, we didn't want to have that contact, um, is that we're freer to lift our eyes and lift our hands as we sing. So I invite you to do so as we lift up our voices to God, praying that he would make us a sanctuary for him. loss seem to have no end. 
We lift up to you all those who are seeking answers and wisdom that they might find them either through your word or through the voice that you give to your disciples. We lift up to you, Christina and her father, for their health concerns. We continue to lift up to you, Aunt Charmaine, now dealing with something new. Her health, Bob Dykeman's health, for the upcoming procedures for Pam, the cataract, but for upcoming treatments that are going to be required for those who are just now being diagnosed with cancer. We lift all of those folks up to you that you would provide the people and the expertise to come into their lives to help to heal them physically, but that their souls and their minds would also be changed in the midst of whatever it is that they are dealing with. We lift up to you families who are grieving over the loss of a loved one. Sharon's family and for the Castleman family specifically this day. Father, we lift up to you our concern for unity in the church, that we could become united in some way, and that it would be infectious to the world. Father, that weighs on our hearts and on our minds. Father, we lift up to you as a great concern to COVID. Father, we just ask for wisdom in dealing with it. We, we see and are witness to the great division that is occurring within, within the world today between people over it. Father, we pray for the wisdom, the knowledge, that love of neighbors, that that would rise above this division. We lift up Thelma's sister and her health condition, for Jeremiah and Catherine, for all of those unspoken prayers. We pray for all those who are traveling to and from, that you would protect them on their way. Father, we also bring to you the names of people who have rejoiced in your blessings, who have reconciled with loved ones, who have survived tragedy and sorrow, who are happy and joy-filled. And we praise you for these things as well. We praise you for the servant hearts of others and all of the folks from Christ Church who are willing to extend themselves beyond we thank you for the being able to be witness to the joy of youth and their youthful exuberance and happiness. We praise you for blessings that you have bestowed upon us, even in the form of a new vehicle. We thank you, and you continue to provide blessing upon blessing by your word to inspire us, to encourage us, to show us the way. We thank you for the opportunity to have class reunions and to reconnect with young friends. We thank you for the moving of the Holy Spirit 
how good it is that we are able to react and open to that Holy Spirit moving in our lives. All to bring you glory. For the opportunity to be here this day with one another in this fellowship of believers. How good it is, how much of a blessing that we see and acknowledge that each and every day. For being able to see Joseph and witness his talents on display at school. And witnessing your children grow up well. For 47th birthdays, not 46th or 48th, but 47th birthdays. For 30th wedding anniversaries, we give you praise that they have withstand, that you have granted these days to these people, that they have lived them well. Father, we thank you even in the midst of a diagnosis of cancer that it is early and treatable. We thank you as we are witness to people recovering, and certainly as Sharon's mother is recovering, that you have blessed that family beyond measure. And Father, we know that you are always listening. You are near to us at all times. We pray over all of these things together corporately, and we acknowledge that there are many more prayers made individually. We do ask these things in the name of Jesus, who died and was raised that we might have eternal life. And we pray together as he taught us. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory forever. Amen. So as we continue to leave our tithes and offerings in the plates in the back, we just continue to be witness to the great blessings that God has bestowed upon us. And in that vein, we give thanks for those offerings and time. So let us pray together this prayer. Heavenly Father, because you are God of all, all we have and all we are, we give. We give these gifts so that they will be placed in us that we cannot accept and bless them in Jesus' name we pray. Amen. I want to invite you to stand as you are able for our scripture today. This is Psalm number one. Please join me as we read this psalm together. How happy is the man who does not follow the advice of the wicked, or take the path of sinners, or join a group of mockers. Instead, his delight is in the Lord's instruction, and he meditates on it day and night. He is like a tree planted beside streams of water that bears its fruit in season, and whose leaf does not wither. Whatever he does prospers. The wicked are not like this. Instead, they are like chaff that the wind blows away. Therefore, the wicked will not survive the judgment, and sinners will not be in the community of the righteous. For the Lord watches over the way of the righteous, but the way of the wicked leads to ruin. My friends, this is the word of God for the people of God. Amen. You may be seated. begin sermon with prayer.
Father, open our hearts this morning so that they may see you clearly. Open our minds so that we may understand the depths of your love for us, so that we may lead the lives that you would desire us to live. Open our eyes that we would see those in this world who are looking for hope, that we might help lead them back to you. Now may it be that the words of my mouth and the meditations of all of our hearts, that they would always be acceptable in your eyes. Lord, you are our rock and you are our redeemer. Amen. So the big topic of the day, I would suggest to you that it is not COVID. The big topic at the root of all conversations that I seem to be involved in regularly and often is where can I find happiness? That is what is really at the root of conversations that are taking place today. I had a long conversation this week with someone who was questioning this plainly. He wanted to know how in these days, how in these days that we are living in, can they find or be happy at all? Now I listen to their litany of things that they say keep them from being happy. Shared with them that this is also a regular conversation that I'm having with people these days. It doesn't, it does not, is not confined, I would suggest again, to just COVID, but that it is very much rooted in putting one's faith into practice. Today's Psalm, Psalm 1, the very first of 150 Psalms, speaks directly to the idea of where happiness not only can be, but declaratively by the Word of God is the first psalm really is that perfect setup for all that is to come in the rest of the psalms, pointing to Jesus and his fulfillment of all of the Old Testament prophecies. And I shared this psalm with them this week. My hope is that you will be able to share the message that it holds with others as well. Today we see what seems to be a general malaise or uneasiness with life in general. People are living without purpose, without direction, opening themselves, willing to open themselves up to all kinds of things aimed at filling holes in their lives seeking after some sort of self-gratification that ultimately leads to greater disappointment and unhappiness down the road. We see it regularly dealing with someone's addiction, for instance. They believe that they are in control of something that is clearly dictating what they do with their life. It is robbing them of the very joy of life. We see people dealing with isolation and people closing themselves off to others, untrusting and alone. They have discovered that the joy they once had and fulfillment of life that they once felt is only a distant memory. There's a great desire for material things in the world, and that leads many into debt. They have things, but they are unhappy with their lives because they cannot afford those things. And they believe that the status that it provides is of greater value to them in the short term. 
placing value on others has become, shall we say, a minimum. Many are all in for themselves today. What benefits me? Whatever gives me happiness is what I am in for. And they find out that really nothing in the end seems to give them what they desire as they take from others, trying to make themselves happy. All of these things we see in the world around us, and it is no wonder that people struggle in finding happiness and joy in the world today. I'm going to suggest to you again that it is directly attributed to putting faith into practice. Psalm 1 tells of two different paths that people may take. Can you see yourself, perhaps your friends or acquaintances or co-workers, on either of these two paths? The first way tells us who it is that will be happy in their lives. Happy are those that do not follow the advice of the world. It is in the friends people choose to have in their lives, who it is that they're willing to take advice and guidance from that sets the stage for happiness. So in a world where we see violence all around us, the group in which someone has found themselves or allowed themselves to listen to has led them to a place where they will not find happiness. Clearly then, that way, listening to bad advice, and indeed as the scripture even says, as the psalm says, wicked advice is a direct path to sinning. And whether someone understands that they are sinning or not, they are led astray by others and ultimately make the choice that they will call that way good. Looting, stealing, gun violence against their fellow man can be rationalized in their minds because they are in a group surrounded by people that say that it is good. At some point, at some point, they openly will say so, so much so that they are willing, as the psalm says, to scoff at the very laws of God. Who says don't steal? What is murder? Cheating isn't bad as long as you get what you want. Honor your mother and father? No. Who, in fact, is God? All of these are questions that they will ask laughingly from those who do believe. Happiness will be found by those who delight in the very law of the Lord, and on his law they will meditate day and night. There it is, verse 2, the key to your happiness. It is the same thing that God told Joshua after Moses died that he must do so that he could be successful in leading the people. Joshua 1, 7 through 9, be strong and very courageous. Be careful to obey all the law my servant Moses gave you. Do not turn from it to the right or to the left, that you may be successful wherever you go. Keep this book of the law always on your lips. Meditate on it day and night, so that you may be careful to do everything written in it. Then you will be prosperous and successful. Have I not commanded you? Be strong and courageous. Do not be afraid. Do not be discouraged. For the Lord your God will be with you wherever you go. The key to happiness is only found through opening your Bible, reading and meditating on what it says. It is indeed putting one's faith into practice. 
There are no shortcuts to happiness. It is when things get difficult in life, when we see the division in the two ways that the Lord is spelling out in Psalm 1, when people give in to the temptations of life, give in to the temptations of the world and into the folks that they associate with, those will be leading someone into all kinds of bad decisions. Happiness will be one of the things sacrificed along the way. It is when people are willing to move to the other path where they will find happiness. It is in that moment when one acknowledges that they are not holding God and His ways as being supremely important, not only in this life, but in the life to come, when they are born again. In the psalmist's words, perhaps it would be being planted anew. Verse 3, those who are on that path will be happy because they are like trees planted by streams of water, which yield their fruit in its season, and their leaves do not wither. In all they do, they prosper. And just a moment on that word prosper, because many will take that, and many do take that incorrectly. Prosperity does not mean that you will become wealthy and healthy overnight. It does not mean that you'll become wealthy and healthy at all. Prosperity means that you will be fulfilling what it is that you are designed for, that what you are called to do. You will prosper in honoring God and glorifying Him in your life. And that will be your happiness. Those who choose to acknowledge the ways of the Lord will be fed by never-ending streams. The Word of God makes you come alive. It feeds you so that you will be vibrant and not going dormant from time to time. You will bear fruit. The fruit will be proclaiming the glory of God Himself. As those who have been planted by God Himself on those streams cannot do anything other than grow. Whatever those who are willing to choose this way will soon understand that God's grace is greater than they need and that they may even need in their entire lifetime. God will fill you. His word will show you how to live. As my high school cross-country coach used to say, it will move you from being a character into having character. When someone opens the book, they will find what it is that they are seeking after. Joy, patience, peace, hope, encouragement, wisdom, all are found within the pages of the Bible. And the more one falls in love with the Word, the deeper our worship will be of the one who gave it to us. The more we understand, the more we will want to fellowship with those who can share similar journeys and experiences with us. And the more we will be equipped to share Jesus Christ with others. Our ability to witness about who Jesus is and why we are Christians is directly proportional to our understanding of what it is that he has indeed done for us. And there is a choice that is being made each and every day on what path people will choose in their lives. A path with God and a path without him. There are not a hundred different ways to go. In God's eyes, there are only two kinds of people the redeemed sinner, the one who acknowledges they are sinners who repent and are born again through the death and resurrection of Jesus Christ. And then there are those who do not, who do not acknowledge that God has provided a way for them to be redeemed through his Son. Much like the words last week, Jesus 
saying to all who would be disciples, if people are seeking after joy in their lives, they must be willing to be transformed into something new. It is Christ's desire and will for people to come to Him, but it is their choice to make. Those who choose the other way will, in the end, be like chaff, blown away in the wind. They will not stand on Judgment Day, and they will perish. But the road for those who choose to follow Him is not an easy one. If someone is going to follow Christ, they must deny themselves and their desires. They must be willing to lay down their lives for the gospel and for his sake. And above all, they must desire to be obedient to his will and his way. So the first question must be in the midst of all of this for you for you which path are you on are you firmly planted like a tree thirsting for god's word meditating on it day and night or do you barely open your bible if you have made the profession of faith then you are called to go out and make disciples of Jesus Christ. If you are willing to be firmly planted in the Word, then you must learn it, love it, and then live it. You cannot love it or live it out if you do not know what it says. I think he could have given the sermon today. The warning is not then to be the one who gives advice that is contrary to the righteous word. Seek to become holy in all the things that you do so that you may help to lead others to where you are. If you have not made the choice to accept Jesus Christ as the one who would plant and nurture you, then I would strongly strongly encourage you to reconsider. I would ask that you look at the joy and happiness that is missing in your life. As the conversation that I had this week ended, when I posed the question, what exactly is missing in your life that will bring you joy? That is where we left our conversation for them to think about. I believe I have the answer. They have to accept the answer. Take this message. Take this message back to your own family, your neighbors, and your co-workers. How simple it is to open up dialogue with the question, are you happy in your life? Let us pray. Father, may it be that in the days to come that we would find ourselves equipped and ready to share the source of our joy and happiness, your Son, Jesus Christ, someone that we know. We pray for the words that you would have us say in those perhaps difficult and awkward moments. May it be that the knowledge of your love for them would move us in those moments when we have doubts and reservations. We ask this in our risen Savior, Jesus' name. Amen. So we close our service today with another song, another hymn that is a prayer. Prayer that God will change us, will transform us by breathing his breath upon us. So I invite you to stand and let us sing together. Breathe on me, breath of God, and let this be your prayer as we come to the conclusion of the service. Thank you. 